And just like that, the next episode has begun! Welcome back to Ace Attorney Justice for All. I'm your host, Mega Shadow Physics of Video Games. It's like a commentary. And with that, when, when we last left off, we were in a bit of a pickle here. We were like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? But I think I might actually have an idea here. So, without further ado. But the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was a murderer. I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. I feel like this is a red herring one, maybe. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. This one, that, that button was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. This is, I feel like this is the one that we need. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. There's, there's no way that we can prove anything to disprove that. So, the button was torn off Juan during his fight with Matt. Now! When I think about it, actually, the knife came off because he was stabbed, right? And he wasn't stabbed till after he died, right? So, no. Strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Cause like I'm pretty. Then the knife come. The knife was severed by. I mean the the button was severed by the knife. So no, that this doesn't make sense. To present present. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. S strangulation. The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. <laughs> and what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume. When? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly! Which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight! <sighs> That's right, Miss Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body! Order! Order! What is the mean- <sighs> What is the meaning of this, right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? Uh, with this button? What was it? <laughs> it was that we needed to save, of course. I mean, what else would it be, eh? Suspending game. Continue. From save point. To have a member, to have a memento of the crime? <laughs> to pin the crime on guard to destroy evidence. That doesn't make sense. I'm gonna go to pin the crime on, on guard. There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. Why did the music stop? There is no anyone. There is no way anyone would be, would put a bloodied button in their own pants. That's right, Mr. Mr. On Guard was set up by the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is well, Mr. Wright. Who in the world is the real killer then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet, not until the very end. The r uh, the real killer, uh, okay. The real killer, the person who planned to who planned to frame Mr. On Guard is... Should we go for that? Hold on. I don't believe that it was, I don't believe that it was Adrian Andrews actually. Celeste Impacts, no. Security lady, no. Man on guard, of course not. Um. What? But he died, so that doesn't make sense. He can't be the killer. Lada, no. Will Powers, Edgeworth. Oh, I'm gonna go with the killer. The killer. Radio transceiver. Right. Which of these four doesn't belong here? Up, down, left, right. <laughs> um. Right? 
Thank you. I feel much better. I'm relieved to know you can at least pick that much out. I worry about you. You seem to fail every time you try to make logical sense. Or in the other words, think before you speak, Phoenix. <laughs> okay. I was gonna go for it. I just... The score, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, judge, I get it, I get it, I wore out your, I wore out your welcome, I wore out your whatchamacallit. Okay, then. Then, who would it have been? I guess it was Adrian Andrews. I don't, I still don't believe that she was a killer. I still don't believe that she was a killer, but okay. I guess we'll have to go with it. Okay, um, anyway, continue. From save point. Yes, please. Oh, crap. I haven't saved since then, huh? Depend the crime on guard. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, we have to skip through all... Yeah, okay, so... When I think about it... Okay, so it couldn't have been Maya. It couldn't have been Pearl. It could not have been Francisca. It could have not have been Edgeworth. It could not have been Gumshoe. It, it was definitely not Juan, because he was not the... What if Juan killed himself? Huh. Well, that doesn't make sense. And the real murder is... Let's go ahead and save, yes please. I think we might have saved just a little bit too early. From save point. Okay, so well Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? Finally, I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet, not until the very end. The real killer, the real person who planned the frame Mr. Guard is... So I guess they actually legitimately do want a physical person. So Maya, no, no, no. No, no, no. The person who planned the frame could have been Juan Cody that for all I know. Security lady, it's either Adrian Andrews or Juan Cody, Cody that. He could have set this up. I'm, he could have set this up. But I don't think that he wanted to die, so... I guess Adrian Andrews it is. We'll go with it. I still don't believe she's a killer, though. Miss Adrian Andrews! I choose you! <laughs> Pikachu, I choose you! You are Mr. Kurita's killer! <laughs> what?! Order! 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 Mr. Wright, let's go ahead and save, because I don't feel like having to go through all that other crap all over again. I mean, because I, I was thinking, I was like, maybe Juan killed himself, but then I was thinking, you know what, that doesn't make very much sense, because he was going to con- Yeah, because if he if he really want- Because like he said, because like Miss Andrew said, if he was going to go down, he was going to take Juan- He was going to take on guard with him, and simply killing himself wouldn't have done that, so I guess Adrian Andrews is the only person that makes the most sense. Order! 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 Mr. Wright! This is a very grave matter! Do you have any evidence to support your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. How preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me! <clears throat> Excuse me? I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then... Then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion on Mr. On Guard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him, and knew which knife to take, was you! I still don't think she's a killer. Then, besides, it's too early. We're only on Act 2-2, right? It's too early to say that um, she's a killer. Like, we, we, we wouldn't go this hardcore yet. Then, what? What about the button that was found in Matt's Hakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Ungard was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such indis incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Mm? <laughs> Does she have like a uh, like a fair uh, like a spare set of glasses like for everything? The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. <laughs> I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. The costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just a, that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been this person to prepare the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, I. 
I still don't think she's a killer. But, but Mr. Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found in the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Th that's right. That is right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. I feel like they're going to make us present evidence. So I'm going to go ahead and save. I think so. Hmm. I, I, I just don't think she's a killer. I sincerely believe that she is a red herring. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But, the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was a classic day's discoverer of a dead body. <laughs> and to top it all off, there's this photo. A photo of the killer as they, ex as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable, no reasonable person on earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? P -p please stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I. I. I refuse to testify. What was that? <laughs> There's a law! It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it, was inc if, it, if it can incriminate me. Oh. Well, yes! You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify, the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ungard's room... Adrian Andrews! Y yes Think it, Think hard about what we just discussed! Understood? <laughs> Alright. That's it! That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews not to, to not testify if things looked bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done? <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? What is so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you've realized this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? It's true. All he's doing, all this is, a simple. Uh, all this is is just a simple theory, right? There's no incriminating evidence to 100% prove that it was. Uh... <clears throat> how, how do I put this? I guess they'll explain. I guess Edgeworth will explain it better than me. Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corrida. Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corrida? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. In other words, yes. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's something. There's nothing to prove it. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No, she's taking that defiant attitude again. M M Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we land in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at the point at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews had refused to testify. And the defense's that theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantialized, substantiated with solid, definitive proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there's only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. R recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial, 
t tomorrow. Well, I mean, Maya's already gone. I mean, Maya's already. Uh, she already ran away. So we. I don't even know. I mean, Phoenix doesn't know this, but we already know this. We don't have it tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then. Please wait, Your Honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial. Please continue the trial. What are you sweating? What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That. That's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please let the trial continue. <laughs> Actually, no. please let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict. Then Maya! But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Andrews, what are you... It's true, Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However... If the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Y y yes that is very true, but... Actually, there's one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews, you see, this is, this is what makes Ed Edgeworth so cool. He's willing, to help, he's willing to help you out every now and then. Because, you know, despite how he may despite how he may come across he is a very firm believer in justice and he will do what he believes is right in order to make sure that innocents aren't thrown into jail and to make sure that criminals um to make sure that criminals don't go walk away scot-free when you found the victim's dead body you poured yourself a glass of juice y yes and i can't help but think how unnatural that is Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again, as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should no in no way impl impl implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what this is about, Ed. What it, what is what it is about Edward today? But I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. <laughs> that rhymed. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request, Miss Andrews, if you please. What I, when I found the body? The glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. Huh? I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought of the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. Excuse me, when I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. That contradicts... okay, whatever. Hmm, so you poured the glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I, I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. When I found the body... Okay. <laughs> but we're gonna press everything in the next episode, ladies and gentlemen. I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? I don't know why I'm talking about this. I sound freaking weird. This is probably really annoying to listen to, too, so I'm gonna stop talking about that. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>